What is up guys? It is really windy out here and I have a box of seeds I want to share with you. We're going to go in the greenhouse where hopefully you can hear me. Oh, that's better. All right, I'm going to grab a chair. So another storm is blowing in. We're about to get a lot more rain and um, I'm actually going to throw a rain jacket on here in a moment and plant in spite of that. But while I am waterproof, my camera's not, so I won't be taking you guys along with me on that. But I did have this box in my mailbox yesterday and I thought I would share this with you. So I mentioned in a vlog last week that Botanical Interests, which is a seed company I've ordered from for several years now, was having their 40% off Memorial Day sale. So I didn't actually expect these seeds to come in time for me to open them and share while the sale is still going on, but it is. So I love to let you guys know when I find good deals like this on seeds, um, because seeds don't expire. This is something that I made the mistake of when I first started gardening, because seed companies by law are required to print on the package sell by. And so like these seeds have a sell by date of 12, 31, 23, because they have to be sold the year that they were packaged for. And the idea is that that keeps a seed company from selling old seeds that may have had diminishing germination to a consumer. The problem is, is people see sell by dates and they think of yogurt, they throw it away and seeds don't expire. I regularly use seeds in my garden that are like several years old. I have I have seeds that are as old as 10 years that I will still use. And it is true, especially if seeds are not stored properly, that they do lose germination rate as the years go on. But if you keep them in a cool, dry, and preferably dark place, like in a container under your bed or a temperature controlled storage area in your home, they can last for many years. And the worst case scenario is, is that maybe 10 years down the road, only half of the package is gonna germinate or maybe a little less than that. So you can still sew them, you just sew them a little more heavily and you'll still get something from them. So when I first got into gardening years ago, um, I bought this this package of carrots and if you've been here very long, you've you have heard me mention the package of rainbow carrots that haunts me. Um, at the end of that season, I used my birthday money. I bought about $50 worth of seeds. I planted a lot of stuff that spring and at the end of that year, um, I threw away all the rest. I remember being really bummed to throw away this rainbow package of carrots uh, because I hadn't even opened it. And I was like, man, and it, 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 I thought it expired. So I'm saying that not being like, hey, don't think that a silly thing. I thought that silly thing. But now we know better. We know that seeds are not dairy products and we can plant them for years, which means whenever seed companies have 40% off sales, it's a great time to stock up your seeds for the next year. And because seed companies are required to package things for the year that they're to be sold, um, a lot of times you can get like close out sales on seeds as the height of the season has gone on. So I'm gonna show you what I, I got from Botanical Interest. I will put a link, I have an affiliate link to them. I will put a link down to below to them. I've had great success with their seeds germinating really well, being what it says on the package. One of the things I really like with the way they package their seeds is they have a lot of really comprehensive information on the package. Uh, one of my favorite things they do is they actually put a little picture on the back of all of their seed packages that show what the plant looks like in seedling form. Um, if you've been gardening for very long at all, you recognize seedlings because you've grown them enough. You've been introduced. But for new gardeners, it's really overwhelming sometimes whenever you plant a bunch of seeds and then a bunch of stuff starts coming up and you don't know what's a weed and what it is that you planted. So having an image there that you can compare and see what is coming up uh, so you can confidently pull weeds out of your garden, I find that very valuable. So someone might ask, Jess, do you really need seeds? <laughs> No, I don't, but that's not what we're talking about right now. I do have a lot of seeds. I still like to buy them whenever I find a really good deal. Sometimes it's just for preference, having something that I haven't tried. Sometimes it's just for ease, um, having lots of something rather than 
uh, necessarily having to wait until I can save it. But more than anything, it really is just for the sake of variety and I like supporting businesses like this and sharing with you guys. So I'm just gonna go, these, I don't think these are in any sort of order. I got a lot of flower seeds. Um, here is the drop dead red variety of flowers. This is a big pack. I think this is the only large pack I got. The rest are the smaller ones. I have grown this variety before, really love it. In fact, this is the variety of sunflowers that I grew the last year that I was in Arkansas and some of them came up so dark dark red that they looked almost black. That was my my year with all the black flowers so I was leaving my garden. And, so anyway, I love that variety of sunflowers. They're really beautiful. Um, okay, so I ordered this little package of Tulsi basil seeds which when it came and I saw it <clears throat> I just started laughing at myself because I have like eight jillion volunteer holy basils currently in my garden so I really don't need this package of seeds but that it was like a dollar and I saw it, oh I like that it just didn't think about it so um next true gold sweet corn I think, did I get more than one of these one of the things that I'm dealing with in my big garden this year is this is my first year to ever have this much space and figuring out what I'm planting when has been somewhat of a challenge. Now I have a good deal of like a golden ban bantam sweet corn already planted. I think I'm going to wait a couple of weeks. If you're planting multiple varieties of corn, you can just stagger the planting two or three weeks in between them to keep cross pollination from happening, which when there are similar types of corn, like it's both sweet corn, it's probably not that big of a deal. Uh, but but I'm gonna wait and I'm actually thinking about planting this in one of my raised beds that um, I'm gonna be taking onions out of. So that's why I went ahead and got these. I will note while I'm talking about seeds lasting a long time, there are a few things that lose germination rates faster and corn is one of them. Corn, I think onions, and I've heard people say that about carrots, but I have planted like few year old carrot seeds successfully before. So um, I'm not 100% sure on the truth of that with carrots. I do know for sure though that corn does tend to lose some germination quicker. If you are buying corn seeds for the next year, if you wanna help preserve the germination rate, you can always stick it in your freezer and then uh, pull them out of your freezer when you're ready to plant. I don't actually think that storing seeds in the freezer is necessary um, in most cases. I, I don't, I have way too many seeds and not enough freezer space to do that. But on things that you know, like corn can lose germination right quickly, um, it, you know, it doesn't hurt anything to go ahead and put that in the freezer. So this package is gonna go in one of my raised beds. All right, I got several things of different kinds of bush beans. So here is like uh, French filet bush beans. I love really thin, tender green beans. I, I'm not a huge fan of the really thick, meaty ones that sometimes are stringy. I like the thinner ones. So I saw that as well as this Ferrari bush bean, um, also described as sleek and slim. I do kind of like that. I got a package of Green Globe Improved Artichokes. Now these, this is the variety of artichokes that we currently have growing in the high tunnel. Um, started from Botanical Interests seeds. They've done amazing. We have harvested artichokes to our heart's content, but I'm thinking about potentially starting some more plants and taking those out and seeing how they do somewhere else because they got really big and where I currently have those, it's hard to pull the wall down on the high tunnel, which is kind of problematic. And I don't know how moving those is gonna go. They might have some pups that come off of them that I can move, but I went ahead and grabbed another package of seeds because I figured we could start some plants and it wouldn't be such a big deal if we lose those. Uh, these are Orient Wonder Beans, which is essentially like a noodle bean. It's a different variety. It's named a different variety. I was just curious if it is similar to the red and green noodle beans that I've been growing. Um, I probably won't start these now because I've already put some Thai soldier beans out here, um, which are like squeaky oriental beans but i did want to try these so this will just go in the seed collection for later use so i grabbed several packages of sweet peas i've been picking my sweet peas lately and um enjoying them 
very much. Loving the smell. And I'm hoping to save some seeds for the varieties of sweet peas that are currently growing in my garden beds. Uh, but these are just some different varieties that I didn't have this year. There's this bouquet blend of sweet peas. Uh, there's no way this word's coming out of my mouth properly pronounced. Um, Bajole. <laughs> I even know it. That sounded real southern. <laughs> They're burgundy. I imagine that maybe what that word means. Um, and then we've got the mammoth blend. So these are, I guess, supposed to be kind of a larger variety. And then this elegance blend. So a lot of blends that look kind of similar. But I got all of these because I want to grow all the sweet peas. I have loved them so much. They smell so good. Sweet peas are not edible. In fact, most parts of the plant are toxic if ingested. So this is not the same as the blue butterfly peas, which we grow for tea. I've got a couple of those plants out there. Um, and it's not the same as sweet peas, what we call green shelling peas or English peas. Uh, these are actually grown for the flowers. They're incredibly fragrant. Uh, they are deer resistant, so it's something that people can grow if they have deer problems. And they're lovely for cut flower arrangements. I've had bouquets of these on my counter since they started blooming. I've enjoyed them so much. And my hope is to set up an area in the high tunnel, in the cut flower tunnel with sweet peas. Of course, we won't plant these until the end of the summer because you're supposed to start them at the end of the summer, let them grow over winter, and they bloom in the spring. So I bought these seeds for next year's blooms. And it was just, you know, the packages were a little over a dollar each. And so I thought, might as well. It's a good time to go ahead and stock up on those. I've got some angel hair. Uh, winter spaghetti squash. This one is interesting because I've grown spaghetti squash multiple times. This is called angel hair. I'm just going to read what it says. It says love spaghetti squash but don't want all the leftovers. Angel hair makes the perfect and easy presentation served on the half shell. Cooked flesh forks away from the shell and strands like spaghetti. Prolific plants produce up to 15 uniformly shaped one and a half to two pound fruits on long vines. Great for trellising. Bacon butter are used as gluten-free low calorie pasta alternative. So this is an F1 hybrid and it's supposed to make smaller squash rather than your typical spaghetti squash, which can get like three or four pounds each. Being an F1 hybrid, a lot of times F1 hybrids have more pest resistance. And where I live, in the south squash bugs and vine borers are a real big issue and as i am dedicated to not putting poison on the garden what i have learned to do to get to handle that because i grow so much hand picking only takes us so far i mean i'm just gonna miss things um is that i do succession sowing of summer squash meaning i put new plants in every few weeks and that way i'm always kind of a step ahead of the borers so when they kill one plant i've got another one that's starting to produce and so in doing that we get to pretty much stay in summer squash production through the early part of the season. Winter squash is a little harder though because it needs 100 plus days. What does this say? 88 days being a smaller variety. But usually it needs about 100 days and that means I have to keep the plant alive for 100 days until those fruits are hardened and ready to be stored. When I saw this that it was a smaller and shorter variety that gives me uh, more of a chance of getting a harvest because I can keep plants alive for shorter periods rather than longer. But also my hope was with it being a hybrid that it may have some sort of resistance to the pest that the heirlooms kind of struggle with a little bit more. Love growing heirlooms, love the story, love the variety, but sometimes there is a place where hybrids can add benefit to your garden and I felt like this might be one of them. Here's a little seed starting guide that Botanical Interests put in with all of their stuff. That's why I say I like how much information they give. A thank you package of lettuce that came for free. Let's see, I got some Cosmos, Diablo, these are like a yellow and orange. All the cosmos I currently have growing in the garden are shades of pink. It just worked out that way. That's the seeds I had. And so when I saw these, this is what I had all over my old farm. And I figured I'd take those and kind of scatter them about. A black eyed Susan vine also just adding some of these colors into the garden. I have a trellis that um, in the cottage garden that I think that this would be good on. So you got a couple other types of sunflowers. This is an elves blend, which is a dwarf sunflower as well as the teddy bear dwarf sunflower. I like throwing these varieties into raised beds because they only get a few feet tall. And so it can add little color here and there. Um, these are great for cutting and making little bouquets. So a lot of times what I'll do when I put a little section of sunflower 
in a garden bed just to add diversity is also like nine seeds in a block knowing that when they all come up they're going to open up around the same time and i can cut those and have one good bouquet and as they're growing um sometimes they'll cast shade on other things which can be a real benefit if you live in a very hot place when they open up obviously it makes the pollinators really happy and then I can cut the heads and have a bouquet. Or I can leave them and just enjoy them growing in the garden. That also works. All right, I got a couple of different types of uh, carrots. The Little Finger and the Scarlet uh, Knot. Both of these work well uh, where I live. So with buying carrots right now, I will not plant these right now, it's too hot. Carrots grow great over the winter where I am in zone eight, South Carolina. Um, and previously where I lived in Arkansas, fall sowing carrots is really kind of where it's at. So I grabbed these to be able to put in probably the high tunnel um, around August. And I will cover the soil with a board. I'll put these in the ground, cover it with a board, which is gonna help them germinate, even though it's probably gonna be hot. The high tunnel has shade cloth, and so that kind of will help bring the temperature down to help them germinate. And then once they're up, it'll be pretty solid and the weather should break shortly after that cool off some and they'll grow over the winter and we'll be harvesting them early in the spring eh, mid spring I, i'm just harvesting carrots that were sown in the high tunnel last fall right now also got beets a few different types of beets i got kioja um, touchstone gold and then this is a mix gourmet blend which has a few different varieties so if you think you don't like beets um and all you've ever had is like the dark red ones or even the um, Kyoja, which is the stripy ones. If you have not liked the earthiness of those, I highly suggest trying a golden beet. Um, so beets taste that way. People say beets taste like dirt. Um, that's not really a euphemism of like that tastes like dirt as in that tastes bad They literally do taste like dirt because they have a chemical compound in them called uh, geosmin It's the same chemical that exists in the soil that makes that smell after the rain You know that that earthy smell that fills the air up on a humid afternoon after it rains That's the geosmin in the soil being released out into the atmosphere into the air and beets have that same chemical compound in them um, So when people say this beet tastes like dirt they're tasting the geosmin and um, we associate that with dirt because it does exist in, in the soil. Uh, however, some varieties have less and golden beets typically have a less earthy taste because they have lower levels of geosmin. I like I like beets. Um, I'm learning to like beets more. It's kind of like this thing. It's kind of this thing that I've just decided, like I'm going to learn to do beets really well. We've had some roasted beet salads here recently, eating at like local farm to table restaurants because of course it's spring, beets, people are harvesting beets, it's that time. And they've been wonderful. Those salads have been so, so good. And I just want to, to nail this. I wanna figure out how to get that at home. So I'm growing a few different kinds. I think harvesting them young is the key, but this is a great kind of seed to buy right now in the winter, planning on growing in the fall because you're gonna need to start these in like, in a lot of places in August. Now beets are frost hardy, so they can grow past when it freezes. And so it's a good thing to get started at the end of the summer to grow into the fall. Um, I grabbed a package of California Giants blend zinnias. Literally, this was a dollar. Um, I have lots of different zinnia seeds, but this is a really great mix. The flowers get to be about this big, um, giant head. And the plants get, if you, if you have healthy soil, these plants will be about four or five feet tall and just full of blooms. You can cut them and they'll keep producing. So that's a really good one to have. And once you put it in the garden, you'll always have it if, if any of it goes to seed. Oriental Nights. Alyssum. I've recently talked about how I love to plant alyssum underneath trellises, um, especially like TP trellises because they make a great living ground cover. They are a plant that is going to survive the frost, so this is a good one to buy to start later in the summer because it's going to stay green after everything else freezes and they'll even bloom. They'll continue to bloom if your days are warm um, after it freezes. This is low growing. It has a delicate fragrance. Alyssum is a brassica and therefore it is edible. I don't really like to eat it because it's really strong. It tastes like funky broccoli, but it is pretty and the bees like it. So that's why I grow that. Uh, the last thing I have here is a package of Easter egg radishes. Again, this is something that's probably a little warm to sow right now, but in a few months, I'll be able to put those in um, and kind of dance that line. 